Hi, I've got my hands on Luminar Neo 1.0. I want to give you a quick look at the user interface. We'll get started with a few more videos after this, but let's see what's where and we'll dive right in. Hi, my name is William Beam. I'm a photographer just like you. So let's go ahead and take a look at Luminar Neo 1.0. All right, so we've got this right here. Let's click on this. I just want to show you Luminar Neo 1.0, and that is the information for the release. So I'm sharing this on the date that it comes out as general release. Early bird people had this a week earlier, and I got mine then as well. So I've had a little chance to play with this before the actual release. But let's start off kind of up here. We've seen the menu, and these are common things that you see. What I wanted to point out, there are a few things that are a little bit different. There used to be on Luminar AI, some buttons that were right here, like if you wanted to add photos, whether it's add an individual photo or add a single photo. I don't see those over here to add that in that way. You can see, click add photos, and it gives you this where you can go ahead and pop that up. It's not the little plus sign that it used to be. So that's a quick and easy way to go ahead and find some photos. If you come up here, you can also see where it says edit single image. If we click on that, it'll open up and then you can choose a single image. But we've also got the example where we can edit or add a folder to come into here. So you can see over here where it says add a folder with images or down here where you just want to edit a single image. And then as we come across the menu over here, just a few things that you might want to see by hand. You can set you know the flags with your favorite, reject or unmarked. You can do some adjustments, which is really just re reverting it back to individual and you can move things to trash. You can show things that are in your finder. And then of course, you've got your objects over here where you can just kind of view things in pairs, whether it's a raw photo or the JPEG only, or just show them separately. You can look at your account information and you can tile your windows. And then of course your help will show you these different folders over here. So that's a quick start at the menu. If you click on the logo over here, you can see there are a few options It'll tell you about Luminar Neo, where you can check for updates if there are any. Right now, there are none. This just came out, so you can see that the 1.0 is where you're at. You can go ahead and click to set your preferences and bring up this menu. And then you can choose, like, where is your location, where you want things, what size cache do you want, and your backup size, your frequency. So normal is once um, per 20 minutes to back up. And then you can just choose these other options that are in here. And then of course you've got your size that you can indicate over here. So if you have a graphics processor, I would advise you to turn that on. And if you want to allow Skylum to collect analytics, you have a choice over here. On means that it will send data, you know, behind the scenes. Off means that it will not be sending any data. So let's start over here. If you want to add photos, there's your catalog. You can click on this and wherever you have photos to add, it starts off here with my pictures. But if you have them on your desktop, something to add, you can go ahead and choose that. On the top center, you see where we have a catalog and then you also have your option to edit. So if we have a photo that we want to edit, we can just come down here and pick something. I'm gonna use this one. And we can click on our edit. So the interface is a bit different if you've used Luminar AI or previous versions. Over here, you have your layers so you can add on a new layer. When you click on that, you can load an image that you want to put in there or you can use these different filters. So there are flares, there are light leaks, sparklers, and stardust bokeh. So if we add this on here, you can see that. Now what I don't see over here is I can hide the layer and you can turn it on and off, but I don't see, other than right clicking, I don't see a way automatically to, to toggle that. So we can do the same thing. On your base layer, you cannot do anything. So this base layer is always gonna be here. You can't just necessarily hide it. But if you notice like all this, these little Stardust things over here, that is from this layer, so we hide it and those go away. So that's the kind of thing that they have built in. I'm gonna remove this. Now you can add different layers based upon images. So if you wanna add your own, you can do that. On this side, we have our tools and we're not gonna go over all of the tools on this particular video. I think I'll do future videos where we go through but notice that the crop AI is renamed from what we used to have in Luminar AI. So it's a slightly different tool. And instead of having a different 
sections. It's everything is pretty much straight down the line. So you can see all of your tools at once, and then you see this little drop down that will reveal everything else that is inside of the tool. And there may be further drop downs within a tool. So for our develop, we can just click the name and it'll close that down. And we have the tools that we were expecting. Many of these are the same that were in Luminar AI. Some of them have some enhancements or changes. So for example, with the erase tool, some of the new features were to remove power lines and to remove dust spots. I'm actually curious since there's so many spots in here with this photo, what happens if we try to remove the dust spots? Oh, good. Cause I was worried that it was going to take some of the stuff that was uh, powder in the air and remove that. So you've got that as far as some new features inside of here. And then of course you can just undo anything and restore. And then you can click these little eyeballs that will kind of show you what the changes were. So for example, if we convert this to black and white, we can click this eyeball and say, here's what we had. And here's the change that we made. This little icon over here is to add a mask. So you can change what kind of mask you want. And right now we only have a paint mask and then there's a brush or an erase. Now in Luminar AI, when I click this, we had three different types of masks. We had a paint mask, we had a radial, basically a circular mask, and also kind of a diagonal or a, a filter mask, where if you were making a, kind of drawing a line to say a mask on one side and not on the other. And I was hoping to see that in here. I don't, so we shall see. The sections that we have, our essentials are up here. We have our creative things. If you've used Luminar AI before, this is going to be very familiar to you. There are a few new tools like the Relight. So you can change uh, brightness near and far. You can also change the warmth near and far. So if I go ahead and bring up the warmth near and maybe reduce the warmth far, that may have a bit of an impact on here. So you can see how it's kind of taken away some of the warmth in the, in the background and her face is a little bit warmer. And of course, we can just turn that off and go back to where we were. And we'll come down here. We have our portraits tools. I think the tools that we have here are kind of interesting. I really like the portrait bokeh. This is one of those ones where we can just kind of change where the, the focus remains or defocus or restore. So it's kind of a chance we can take a look at and see what the difference is. You might notice what the mask looks like, and you can kind of change that as you hover over your subject area, and it'll show you what the mask looks like. So let's go ahead and reset that. And that's a quick look at the tools. Down at the bottom, you'll see the actions pretty much as revert to original. You can change your zoom level, and I've got that fit to screen, which is about 80%. And then you've got this little eyeball. So let's make a quick change. We're just going to really mess up the color here. And then we can go ahead and click on this eyeball and that'll show you what your image looked like without that particular change. And not just that particular change. You've got the eyeball that is for this change. And this eyeball down here is if we did a lot of them. So let's say if we choose our subject, put it right here, we put on a big heavy vignette. So I can use this eyeball just to see the difference in that, but it doesn't affect the other change. This one down here is global. So this is what our photograph looked like before we did any changes. That's kind of our base image. And this is what we've done with the few changes. So you can just click on the title of whatever tool you're looking at. Now you can see over here, our edits, you can see we've added a vignette, we've added color, and then you've got these little things over here to kind of toggle them on and off. If you don't like the edits, you can just discard them. And then we have presets. So this is, very similar to what we had in Luminar AI, if you're familiar with that product. And you can say, you can see there are recommendations for this photo and you can use these little arrows to kind of go through the different types. So let's say that in this influencer collection, we could choose one of these and then determine if we like it or not. You can vary the strength. And if you really like it, you can click the heart to mark it as a favorite. And we just come back over here and you can see there are more presets going on down the line. So you can choose any presets that you want, even if it's not really something like, for example, this is a portrait. If you want to choose a preset from a macro or something cinematic, you have that option. 
And also there's an option down here to get more presets. Those are going to be purchased presets. And then there are preset categories. So if you say this is a portrait, I just want to look at the portrait presets. It'll narrow down the list and you can just go over here to easy portraits. And let's say we want to do a vignette. And you can see how it's kind of changing the vignette. So as I take it to zero, that's where we are. And then as I add this up, it adds the vignette on here. You can do a low key. And you can see how it's affecting the color. So that gives you an option to just simply use some presets to affect your photograph and make things the way you want. And if you want to get rid of them, just come back to your edits. You can either discard all edits, or if you want to get rid of one, you can click this trash can and do it that way. So these items over here are different layers that you can add. And one of the advantages of Luminar Neo versus Luminar AI is the ability to add layers. So these are things that are built in. If you have others that you want to add, you can click load image, and then you can go ahead and find something that you want to add into your photograph. So if you've got images that maybe have um, maybe some overlays like these, or they could be different subject matter, maybe you want to put something in the background, this is where you can add layers to it. And we'll go over that in a future video. So you can just click this to add more layers. And these are default things that are available in case you want to use them. So if you want to click over here on this little arrow, it'll show you some more of the light leaks. And there's a fair number of these things that are added in here. So let's click on this one and you can see how it makes a change. So you can click on this and I'll right click and I can hide the layer, show the layer or get rid of it. If I decide it's not right for my photo. All right, so we've done that. Let's go back to the catalog. There are a few things over here. So we were on the edit screen for a moment. We're coming back to the catalog. And I've got all of my photos that are being shown in here. You can see that there are some sample images that you can practice with. You can see things that are on this day that this was added to this day of the week, or excuse me, this day of the year. And you can uh, show all photos or something captured by a current time. If you've done edits on a single image, like we just did on this one that I'll show you here, recently added, recently edited. And if you've got any photos that are in the trash, so those are things I've screwed up, so that's why I don't want to show them too much. And then, of course, you can create your folders over here. I've got a folder called Demo. And then this one, Luminar Share. These are just some snapshots I took on my iPhone over at Kennedy Space Center. And I want to show you something that I think is rather interesting. If you come up here to the top where this little icon is, it says Export. You expect it to say Disk. You know, you can send it to Messages. You can send it to Mail. This item over here is called Connect. And this is how you connect your mobile phone. There's an app that you can download for free on your mobile phone. And all you do is open that app and it has a menu option to connect by scanning on this QR code. So I'll go over this in the future video, but I just bring that up. I hold up my phone and I'm connected. So now if I want to send photos, to Luminar Neo, and I, I will show this on a video. I'm just, right now, I'm just kind of adding some strange things. So, so I'm gonna select this one, I'm gonna click Add, and I know you can't see what I'm talking about, but if I come down here to Luminar Share, I'm gonna click the buttons to, on my phone to send to Luminar Neo, and there's just a quick shot. My wife finished a 50 mile a marathon or a run or whatever. So that's her at the finish line. And you can add photos very quickly and easily from either an iPhone or an Android phone. So you can get download the app and then that allows you to connect your phone without having to plug in. You just simply scan that QR code. And then I think it's a, a simple, uh, I can't remember if it's a Bluetooth or wireless connection, but it allows you to uh, communicate with pictures that are on your phone and bring them into your catalog. And that is a quick look at the user interface. It's a little bit different than what we saw before with Luminar AI. So you have your catalog, you have your edit, and depending upon which version you're in, then you have your tools, any edits you've made, any presets you want to apply, and now layers that you can add to it. So I'm not gonna go over too much with layers right now. You can see that it just added some flair, but we will go and dig into more of Luminar Neo. I hope you enjoy this. 
And for those of you who decide to buy using my affiliate link, then I will give you a course that I'm working on, just as I did with Luminar AI, that will show you how to use all the tools and all the features inside of Luminar Neo. So I'll have details down below. But if you just go to williambeam.com slash Luminar Neo, that will give you into a place where you can purchase Luminar Neo. And then you just go ahead and email support at williambeam.com with your invoice. I'll verify that. And once you're verified, as soon as the course is complete, I'll make sure you have access to it. So thank you so much. I appreciate your time. If you have any questions about Luminar Neo or there's certain things that you want to see demonstrated, please let me know in the comments below. I'll be happy to answer. And I'll be coming up with more videos to show you how this wonderful new program works. Thanks so much. I'll see you in the next video.